Hey everybody, I'm Sam Webb and this is Shopify Dev Tips. In this video and over the course of the next few videos, I want to talk about Shopify sections. In the past, I've definitely touched on Shopify sections and you can see some examples of that in my Shopify theme build series. But I want to make some dedicated videos that will explain the current different types of sections and in the future I'll be able to add on to this when Shopify releases all of their newer sections. But for now, we have to work with what we've got, so let's get started. As of the time of this recording, there are two types of sections. There are static sections and there are dynamic sections. In this video, we're going to cover static sections. So before we write any code, let me explain the general idea of a section. A section is a chunk of code where the data or content is directly associated with the code for that section. And in the admin, they'll show up under customize. If you click customize, the first thing that pops up on the left are all of your sections that you have, at least on this page. And so for this example, we've got the header, and then the header has very specific fields that are associated with it. It's got an image for the logo, the width of that logo, and information about the announcement bar. And so when I enter data in here, that data is not globally accessible. It's only accessible from within the section file for header. And if I show you that file, you'll see we've got all the liquid code, including the HTML and CSS for the header and announcement bar. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, we have this schema that basically explains what the data will look like. And so we've got an image picker for the image, We've got a range for that uh, selector of the size of the image. And so these are the two important regions of a section. First, you'll have your HTML code or your liquid code. And then below that, you'll have your schema. Now let's get started creating our own custom section. To start, if you wanna create a section, you have to create it in the correct place. So in the workshop advanced gulp workflow, which is what I'm using, you'll go into source, into liquid and into sections. If you're working directly in Shopify, you won't have all these subfolders and you would just go directly into sections. And if you're in any other workflow, you'll just need to find this sections folder. They'll probably have one. And we're gonna create a section called heading. Now again, the two things we need are our HTML portion and our schema portion. So we'll do a div called heading and then we'll add an H1 here. And below that, we'll add a schema tag. And the schema tag is what's required for you to explain the data that will be stored within this section. And it's done using a JSON object. So we'll start out making an object. And it requires two things. It requires a name and it requires some settings. So we'll start with the name. The name is just going to be heading. And then settings is an array of the different settings objects. So within here, we'll make an object. We'll give it a type of text, an ID of heading, a label of heading, and a default of hello world. I'm not gonna get into explaining what each of these settings are. I have two previous videos that explain all the theme settings, and I'd refer you to check out those videos if you wanna know more about exactly what settings are available. And so now we have the two sections that are required, right? We have our HTML section and we have our data section or our schema section. And now we have to make them interact with each other, right? We need to use the data that's being collected and display it on the front end of the site to the end user. And so the way to associate this data is to pull it from the section object. Anytime you create a section that has a schema, there will automatically be an associated object that's created called section. And so we access that with the word section within liquid output tags. And you can think of section as this entire object right here. So this section object here, you can think of it as this entire object. And so we wanna access the settings property on the section object. And so we do that with dot notation. So we'll have section dot settings. And this section dot settings refers to this settings array here. 
and you access individual settings by their ID. Their ID needs to be unique. And so this one has an ID of heading, all lowercase. So I'll just copy that. And we do that with dot notation as well. So we'll do another period and add heading there. And that's our section. So remember a little earlier in the video, I mentioned that we'll be creating a static section. And static sections have to be placed on a page in a specific location. So I'm gonna close the sections directory and open up the templates directory. We're gonna grab index, which is the home page, and right above content for index, we're going to add in the heading section. So we add a section tag, and we're gonna pass it the name of the section that we wanna add in. So the name of this is heading. Now on the front end, if we refresh the page, we'll see hello world up here. And if we go back to the theme editor, we'll see a heading section on the side here and if we open that we have this heading setting that we can then change the text for so let's say goodbye world and that updates here now i definitely want to clarify some of the limitations around sections and the first thing is that a static section is not a template and what that means is the data that's inserted into a static section will persist across multiple pages so let me demonstrate that. I'm also gonna add this to the product page. Right above this section for product template, we're gonna say section heading. And if I open up a product page, you see I have goodbye world here. And so if I go back to the theme editor and we're looking at the home page right now and I change this to hello world and save it. And then I refresh the product page you see that it updates here as well. And that's because the data that's stored in a static section is specific to that section, right? It's not a template, it is a section with set data that you can use on multiple pages. The next thing I wanna show you is something called blocks. And blocks are a way to add specific components within a section that are repeatable, that are templatized. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add blocks. It's gonna be on the outside of the settings array. So let me collapse that so you can see. It's outside of the settings array. We're gonna add blocks. And that's also going to be an array. And within there, we're gonna create a specific block type. And that's going to be an object with a name that we're going to call heading and a type that we're also going to call heading. Now something about blocks that you should know is that this type here is not the same as this type for a setting. Block types are whatever you want them to be. You can name it whatever you want. It's a way for you to define what this specific block is supposed to be. So whereas this setting is of type text, which is a specific setting type that's predefined by Shopify, for this block, I'm going with type heading, which does not necessarily have to be predefined by Shopify. And so then in block, we're gonna have settings, which will be an array, and it's gonna work the same as the section settings, right? So it's gonna be an array of setting objects, which then will refer back to Shopify's predefined types. So we're gonna say type equals text, ID equals text, label text, and default is going to be hello world. And the way you would access these blocks is by using section.blocks. So let's come down here for block in section.blocks. And then you can consider this block that gets pulled as, as a template of this right here, this whole object. So similar to how when we call the section object, we have to call settings on that. We have to do the same with blocks. So we're gonna say h1 and we'll say block.settings.text. Right, because we have to pull the idea of this. And on the front end, you won't see any difference. If I refresh the page, nothing happens because blocks are templates that have to be added. And so let's go into the theme customizer. And you see now we have this content section and this is for all of your blocks within a section. And we have add heading. So you see that it says add heading with a capital H and that, that name heading comes from this name right here. So we'll click add heading and now you can see we have hello world twice. Let's say goodbye world. And we go back and we can add another heading. This one again says hello world. So we'll save that. 
And again, you'll see those changes reflected on the home page as well as the product page. Now something useful with blocks is that they can be moved around. And so if I wanted this, that second hello world to be before the goodbye world, I would just drag that up above it and you'll see that it moves it up. But I can't replace this hello world because it's statically placed above that. Like if you look at the code, this H1 is statically placed above this grouping of the blocks. And so this first H1 is stuck here. And that's also similar to static sections. Static sections are placed in a specific place on the page. So if we go back to index.liquid, you see that we have content for index down here and section.heading here. And so you see this area right here where it says sales on women necklaces and add section, that's what's provided by content for liquid. And so it's always below heading. And so as an intro to static sections, that's really all there is to it. It's really just a component where the content is directly associated with the component. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about dynamic sections and how you would implement those on the homepage. And then as a third video for this kind of mini series about sections, I'm gonna show you how you can hack static sections to make them work in a similar way to dynamic sections on other pages outside of the homepage. So definitely look out for those videos. But for now, if you enjoyed this video, Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time.